All right, good morning, folks. So today we are going to be going over uh, homemade insect traps. So these are all going to be things that typically you'll have lying around the house. I did a couple of substitutions because I want to stick along our current themes of, um, you know, keeping things within the system that we already have, using things that are already available, and then limiting things that we have to purchase for our products. I want to make sure that I'm inclusive of some folks who may have economic restrictions, um, as well as keeping things centered on reusing. So um, I am following a model that I will link in the video comments. And so the first thing we're going to do, this is going to be done with a plastic bottle. Um, and the original instruction said to use a two liter. I'm not a big soda drinker, so um, I had my other half snatch this from someone at work. And so we are gonna stick with what we have here. So you need an empty plastic bottle to start, a marker or pen, a box cutter, or I'm gonna use these scissors, a tape measure, um, a quarter cup of brown sugar, and about one and one third cup of hot water, a gram of yeast, and I will explain that in a moment, a measuring cup clearly, and tape like duck, scotch tape, or electrical. I'm using electrical tape. That was also something that we already had readily available. So, Revisiting the yeast element, I actually uh, did a little bit of digging and some just knowledge from mom's mom, right? My mom. Um, and I'm going to use baking soda and the juice from a lemon. It's going to be equal parts. And what you want to do is you're mixing. It's a little bit of kitchen chemistry to uh, create a CO2 producing um Reaction, reagent, I'm sure there's a chemistry professor somewhere that I had groaning uh, at my failure to recall this vocabulary at the moment. Um, but you want the CO2 production from your mixture if you don't have baker's yeast readily available. Again, not a big make bread at home person. Um, I'm going to clear off a notification real quick. So I don't, I don't have that. I don't use anything like that. And again, like I said, I want to stick to not having to go buy anything. And then uh, brown sugar I already had as well. So the idea is once the bugs are in here, they're drawn to the thing that creates CO2 and then feeds off the sugar. So that's why that's relevant. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And you are going to want to take your tape measure and then mark about halfway down the plastic bottle. I already rinsed it out so there's a little bit of fluid and we are looking at about eight inches. So I'm gonna mark at, I'll try and smooth this out. I'm gonna mark at about four inches here and you can see. So that way I know where to cut, where about my halfway point for this bottle is. And I know a box cutter would be a lot more beneficial. Um, I like to think I'm pretty decent with sharps and general safety. So I'm just going to pinch it to get it to cone up the way that I need so that I can cut straight across or close to it. And with a little bit of a pinch there, you don't want to push it too hard because you don't want it to bounce back at you. You don't want it to fly in plastic, so on and so forth. Safety first. And I'm just going to follow the line around and be safe with these edges. Always cut away from yourselves when using any kind of sharps. If you have any slip, uh, you want to keep your hands, fingers, any appendages really that you value, which hopefully is all of them, uh, away from the line where you cut things. And so now we have our two halves. It should be about equal, right? And I'm going to go back to my instructions here. Um, and this is four inches. So, okay, good. Got that part done. Uh, it did say draw a circle around the bottle four inches from the lid. You're cutting the plastic bottle in half. The measurements do not be exact. Uh, drawing a marked guided line will be helpful for a lot of you. I just eyeballed it. Um, it's easier and like I said, I'm pretty good with them and uh, eyeballing measurements. So I'm pretty happy with where mine is. 
Uh, I already cut it in half, and now we are going to measure a quarter cup of brown sugar. Um, I'm actually going to skip that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pour my water into the bowl here so that I can get that quarter cup measurement for you all. So I've got a bowl down here. I'm just pouring the water into it. I already made sure that it was pretty hot so that it would withstand. Um, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a quarter cup of brown sugar. And... <clears throat> All right, I'll shake that out, make sure I get a good, even measurement. We are sitting right at a quarter cup. So let me make sure that's perfectly physical. Ta -da. And the water is already heated. And so uh, we are going to go ahead and put this into the bottom. I did not think about the fact that I was supposed to be using a two liter and I'm using a 20 ounce, or I'm sorry, a uh, double check, 16.9 fluid ounce. So we should do this to scale. Let me run a couple quick calculations here. How many ounces are in a two liter? Let's see. Uh, two liters is about 67.628. So I'm actually just going to reuse this and I'm going to write that down. 67.628. And what we need to do next is use the number that I'm currently working with. So I'm going to take 67.628 divided by 16.9. That gives me 4.0017-ish. So I'm going to need to do everything in fourths uh, for scale here. So let me draw this back. My quarter cup is actually going to need to be about a sixteenth of a cup. How many? Milliliters are in a quarter cup. Uh, 60, so 60 divided by 4 is 15 milliliters. So I'm going to just leave this off to the side, this little 5 milliliter scoop. I love this. It's got teaspoons as well as the conversion for milliliters, one of my favorite kitchen tools, so 5, 10, and 15, good, and then I'm going to put this back in the bag, in case you all haven't noticed, I'm not a big fan of wasting, especially when it comes to food, kitchen supplies, all right, and we did one and a quarter cup earlier for our, I'm sorry, one and a third, so let's call that, let's see, 1.333 milliliters. That's 300. So we'll do 315 divided by 4. So I need 78 mLs. <coughs> Let's do 315 minus 70, well, 78.75, so let's call it 79. Let's do 315 minus 79 mLs. I need to take 236 out of my bowl here. So, let's do this. My measuring cup also has mLs on it, and we're going to do 236 taken out. So I'm going to get it to 200, and then I'm going to go back to my teaspoon here, 5 mLs, 1, 
So 205, 210, 215, 220, 225, 230, 235. And I'm going to sneak out just a little bit extra to try to get us at the 236 mark. Okay. So now I've got my ingredients to scale for the bottle that I was using. Uh, let's hope I'm good enough at math and chemistry still that these numbers are accurate and this isn't going to overflow on me. So your first step is going to, sorry, your first step in mixing the process is going to be pour the warm water, hot water into the lower ah, half of the bottle. Okay, done. And then I'm going to take the brown sugar. So clearly we need to pour that water slowly because if that was any hotter, uh, we would have been straight up not having a good time. So pour the brown sugar into the lower half of the bottle. I'm going to give this a little bit to cool because it's warm. Um, you can already see it kind of um, mixing a little bit. And... I don't think that it's going to take a full 20 minutes like it suggested. Um, it's pretty cool in here today. Very grateful to have some AC pumping and flowing. Yeah, I'm just going to help it along by mixing. Make sure it gets good and diluted in there. All right. And so the next thing that I need to do while this finishes cooling the rest of the way is this says to add a gram of yeast to the plastic bottle. We already talked about scale and the fact that I'm looking at using a quarter of what uh, the actual recipe calls for. So let's see here. So we need a quarter gram, and you're supposed to do equal parts for the combination here uh, for a yeast substitute. So let me just double check. RNA. Ooh. All right, so one milliliter is equal to one gram. I just wanted to check that. So we're going to do... this as well. Let's see if I've got that measurement on here. I've got 1.25 mLs. I can work with that. I can work with that. So I'm going to drip some lemon juice. I'm actually going to move this over off screen a little bit because I don't want to taint the mixture. All right. So since I'm looking at 1.25, I'm going to need to do about four-fifths of the way to the top. There we go. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see that pretty well, so I'm going to go ahead and dump that in my bowl. And then I'm going to do the baking soda a little bit off screen too to make sure I don't make a mess and add too much. All right, we're going to do the same thing there. We're going to shoot for about uh, four-fifths. So I just kind of dab my finger in it a little bit to get me where I needed to be. And I'm going to dump that into my bowl that's got the lemon juice in it. And we are at equal parts. All right. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and use this spoon to stir it up. Oh, look at that. Love a good chemical reaction. It's already bubbling, letting off some of that CO2 that it makes. Um, so the idea is that the lemon juice is acidic. The baking soda is basic. It leads to a chemical reaction as well as a precipitate. I do remember that one from chemistry. So, all right. Let's see how we're, yeah, my bottle feels pretty good, and you can see the brown sugar is pretty well mixed in there. So we're going to add the directions, say, add one gram. We already covered that we use 0.25 grams or 0.25 milliliters of my solution. 
Um, so it says that the yeast will consume the sugar and produce carbon dioxide. That is what is going to attract the mosquitoes in this trap. I'm going to pour slowly and kind of just scoop out the remainder of the mixture with its little bit of precipitate. Good. Ooh, it's still bubbling. I like that. I'm going to stir that up. Oh, I love it. Okay. And I'm going to go back to the instruction page and just make sure I'm still doing what I'm supposed to be doing here. Oop, I got enough of that on my hands. It's a little mixed up. Okay. And so we are supposed to take the top half of the bottle uh, upside down and the, little, the lid of the bottle is going to be facing downward. So consider like a funneling type motion, right? I don't think this is going to work exactly the same um, as the two liter. I think the idea is that they're supposed to be fairly equivalent. So I may have to adjust for that, squish it down in there a little bit. Um, so uh, it does say to push inside gently until the cut edges align. Ensure the top of the bottle, so the lid, is above the water line. So the, an adult mosquito in this case would have enough room to fly into the bottle, down the lid, and there's not enough room for them to fly in the bottle, then um, you should empty a little bit of your solution out. So I'm actually still doing what it calls for. So I'm just going to cut off this top portion to make that a little bit more even um, as the instructions have called for. So I still have my permanent marker nearby. And I'm going to do a little bit from the top to make sure that I've got some room to work with. And I just know to... Oh, hello. Cut below that line. Oh, my goodness. Let me address this. Oh, no. All right. So we had to address baby butt. We got her taken care of. And so I'm going to go into my bottle to get rid of some of this excess plastic so that the bugs can fly in where they need to. So I'm going to go down a little bit again. Please make sure that you are always cutting away from yourself. I like to curve my fingers in whether I'm cooking or you know whatever's going on. I'd rather take a little bit of skin off a knuckle than even the fingertip. Um, all right. like to thank years and years of wrapping presents with my grandmother for being able to cut fairly straight. All right, so now, oh, now I'm more appropriately aligned with the top, oops, sorry, and the top of my bottle is still above the water line. So we're good to go, and we've adjusted again for the scale when it comes to the ingredients. Um, you are to secure the edges here with tape. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think that's probably a pretty good idea uh, regardless, not just to um, keep it in one place, but these edges are a little bit sharp. So I'm going to just take a strip of electrical tape and just kind of wrap it around. Now I know you can do some more here to probably make it prettier. I don't really care how it looks. I just need it to do what it needs to do. There's a whole mood right there. <laughs> um, all right, and so I'm just kind of going around. I'm securing the top and then I'm still making sure that my lid does not go under the water line. And if it does, that's fine. You just pour a little bit out. Just kind of bob off the situation and turn it into some happy trees. Just pour a little water out. There's nothing we can't fix here. If some of it goes awry. All right. So I'm going to take the rest of this off for the sake of continuity. I went all the way around. Super secure. Ta-da! And you can place this in and around the house. I'm currently battling some ants. Um, mosquitoes are a big one this time of year. They're also disease vectors. So that is important when you're considering uh, sustainability and environmental health. Are you doing anything to protect your health and well-being? And then are the steps that you're taking 
things that have an impact on the planet. Uh, in this case, the reuse, the easy, the ease of the project. I mean, once it took me like 10 minutes stops, including all of my talking, um, it was 100% free. So I like the, you know, the element of economic sustainability as far as like the household goes, you know, I, this is, I literally did this with trash or what would have been trash. Um, and things that we already had lying around. So I feel like that has some high value sustainability for household economics, um, as well as being able to, you know, choose where we spend our money or in this case, don't. Uh, that is something I like to be able to do is have the flexibility there, um, as well as the environmental consideration of plastics are a huge problem. Um, I'm going to link some things in the video description, and this is just one of the ways that perhaps you don't live in a recycling district. Maybe it's something that you have to pay for in your area and you can't, and that's fine too. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk about at mom's house and that I want to keep talking about is um, it costs money sometimes to do the right thing. Sometimes the cheaper, easier fixes, that easier, softer way is, is the only one that people can afford. And so what are we doing to make room for each other and people who maybe don't have the same economic spheres or capability uh, that we do? And that's what's important when we talk about the fact that our planet is finite, right? These systems of people, planet, and profit, they're finite. They have limits. And maybe if we stop pushing the limits so far, we could do a lot better. Um, we can make a lot more high value choices in regards to sustainability. And what I mean by that is doing something as simple as taking trash, limiting what you're tossing in a landfill. Maybe you can't recycle, but you can reuse. Uh, maybe you've got a bad mosquito problem. Maybe you live by water like I do. I don't know. Um, and I could easily make 20 of these. Um, a personal choice that I make is I just try not to buy single-use plastics because we don't live in a recycling district. Um, I'm changing that soon. And so it's just something that I don't do. You know, I buy glass bottles um, or reusable plastics, things like that. I love um, glass and repurposing. Um, and just in general, the consideration here is that this was a super easy thing to do. This was a very easy thing to make. Uh, I didn't use anything that I didn't already have, and I get to limit our uh, output of plastics as a household, so it's good for the environmental health, and it's also good for env the environmental sphere of sustainability on a global scale because I'm not contributing to these plastic floating islands, you know, that we have in the ocean. It's actually not a laughing matter. It's just uh, very awkward. That's a thing that we've done as <clears throat> um, humans. There's islands of floating plastic. I think we should all let that sink in for a minute. Um, and so I think that choices as small as these, because our choices matter when we talk about sustainability, right? Uh, really take into consideration global limits and economic limits as well in this way. It's free. It's good for the planet. It's good for your house. And scale is another thing that we talk about when we talk about sustainability and making good choices. Is this something that is easy and simple for you to do? Is this something we can pass around, we can normalize amongst our friends that even though it took me 10 minutes and however long it's going to take me to put the video together and publish it, is this something that we can help normalize? Because it's important to normalize those concepts of sustainability to be able to collectively take a look at our choices and our impact not only on the planet, but on each other. Are we sharing enough knowledge that we are helping uh, in cooperation? Are we sharing our resources? Are we sharing our knowledge? Uh, what are we doing in the society sphere uh, to try to do better with and for each other? So this is that from me today and from Mom's House. I'll probably put out a couple more today along the same vein as this product. Uh, project, I'm sorry, is this, <laughs> is this project. I'll put some links for plastics and their impact on the environment. Um, but I really want us to take a minute and focus, especially in such uncertain times, on the impact that we're having on each other and what happens when we share knowledge. What happens when we talk about sustainable concepts and helping each other to be more independent, not um, 
spend money, not spend money if we don't have it, not spend money if we do have it, or if you do have it, making good choices about where you spend your money and the parts of your community that you're investing in, um, and the economic sphere of sustainability on a local level. You know, what are we doing to help each other? What are we doing to help our communities? And what are we helping to do in the corners of the planet that we live on? So this is a little bit of that. More of that to come. I may end up slicing the videos together um, and just putting them all together as one. But that was a really important consideration for all of the projects I'll be doing today. And so I wanted to make sure that we touched on that. Um, I'm going to drink a little bit of coffee and then get the other started because, like I've said before, motherhood is not for the under-caffeinated. Um, and the thing that goes best with this video, a positive attitude. Or if you're feeling a little grouchy today, uh, you know, maybe just rewind and chill, hang with me for a bit, you know, uh, everybody's welcome at mom's house, come as you are, stay as long as you like, uh, as always, eat something from the earth, drink plenty of water, and go get some sunshine today if you can, if you can't find any sunshine, maybe you should be the sunshine. All right, folks, so we've got another one here, follow the same process as before, this one's going to be for fruit flies, I'm going to dive off, get my tape measure, which fell earlier. There we go. And I'm using another plastic bottle that I snagged from someone. I'm gonna go, looks like we're just under eight inches. So I'm gonna go around the four inch mark again and put this off to the side. I have a list of ingredients um, in the description. So we're just gonna get at it. For this one so that I can demonstrate a little better just how quick and easy this process is. Alright, so we're about half and half and looks like we got about the same jam going on as before because I'm not using two liter bottles so I'm just going to mark where this will fall evenly I want to double check first, make sure that my liquid is going to take up the space that it's supposed to in the bottom. So I have a half, of cu a half cup of water in this bowl. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in. We're going to go slower this time to make sure I don't spill it. And half a cup of vinegar already prepared. All right, this one's a lot taller. I may need to switch bottles, which is fine if I've got to do that. I've got another one handy. So guilty of reusing, uh, of buying <clears throat> single-use plastics when it comes to this brand. Um, I do have a condition that requires consumption of some vitamins and minerals, and this is the easiest way for me to do it, unfortunately. Um, so, honestly, that's why this video is really important to me, uh, making sure that I'm doing what I can with the plastics that I do use, the single-use plastics, and uh, doing a little bit more to lessen my impact with what goes on there. So I'm going to actually cut from this top rung because it's already outlined for me. This bottle's a lot tougher, so I'm just going to cut along the band. Try to weaken that. I think that's going to happen safely. So I'm going to attempt for puncture and then go from there. Perfect. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you keep your hands out of the way. All right. Have a little bit of slip. Cool, I got my hole in my bottle, so I'm just going to guard my fingers a little better there. Yeah. All right, now we're in business. Cutting along this line and Lord have mercy. 
safety first. All right, so I'm just going to transfer from the first bottle, conservation of liquid, folks. All right, so it's water and vinegar pre-mixed, one cup, equal parts each. And then if I've got to pour some out, that's fine too. I really like the idea of being able to keep this taller. So I think I'm going to do my tape a little bit differently this time um, for this process. We did 5% uh, vinegar, half a cup of that, and then a half cup of water. You can see right here, 5% acidity is what you're looking for. Um, and then you need two tablespoons of sugar. So I've got one. Two, and this is actually a half tablespoon, so I'm going to do four. Make sure your conversions are correct for the materials that you work with. And we're going to need two tablespoons of dish soap. One, two, that's one tablespoon, and one, two, that's the second tablespoon. So this one's going to be for fruit flies. The first one we did was for mosquitoes. Squeeze a little bit of that off there. Anyone who's ever worked in food and bev knows this one very well. You can also do it with a rocks bar glass um, and even something as simple as a hair tie or a rubber band. Now the solution concentrate, I'm going to mix it up because it looks like we're getting a little too close to my opening, so I'm going to mix a smidge to make sure my concentrations and my recipes stay equal and I'm going to pour a little bit out like I recommended in the first video, perfect. And I do like the concept of this being taller than having a little bit more of a funnel to fall into the trap. So I'm going to secure this because this could also serve as an entry exit point and defeat the mechanism of the shape of the trap. Now, as you saw, this plastic was a little difficult, so you can imagine it's a bit sharper than the previous. I'm just going to keep rolling this around. So anyway, for anyone who's ever worked in food and bev, we all know this one uh, quite well. You can use a rocks glass, cellophane, uh, wrap, like saran wrap, whatever uh, you use for produce, and a hair tie, dish soap, vinegar from the kitchen, um, and uh, use the rocks glass, saran wrap on top, and then a hair tie or rubber band on the top, poke some holes. Same solution, works the exact same. It's amazing at getting rid of fruit. fruit lies. Uh, anyone that's ever worked outside bar knows how terrible that is for the summertime um, and keeping your guests from having bug complaints, uh, which is the worst. That's not something you want as an establishment. Um, they're not the cutest in the world, but they work. And if you use blue dish soap, uh, most of the time, it's just going to match your cleaning solution, and that's all people assume it is, so you don't really have to broadcast the fact that you got bugs, a perfectly normal part of food and bed during the summertime, but, you know, whatever. So here we go. I'm just continuing to wrap around. My tape is fighting me quite a bit here, and maybe that can serve as more of like a protective barrier to keep them from getting out. I don't really know if I want to go that route with the second one. Let me just try to wipe it off. I think it's a moisture problem. And then we're going to go at it one more time and see how that does. And I'm going to smooth the edges around as well. All right, friends, we are in business. There you go. Finish the first, and we've sealed off the top. You can see my little, sorry, maybe I should get it a little more even. You can see my little lid, and they can fall. I am barely above my waterline here, folks. 
um, but the lid will go down into your mixture. Uh, this is exactly the same as the first one that we did, but a different combination of essentially chemicals that you can find around your household for the same reason as well as what would otherwise become trash. So, so far we have our mosquito trap. Let me make sure that you all can see what I'm doing here. We have our mosquito trap from the first video. This one is for um, fruit flies. I'm going to tilt it, see if you guys can get a good little mix there. Um, and both of these are going to help remediate some of our summer bug problems. It's a free solution. Um, I already discussed the sustainability elements at play here and just some general things that you can do to help boost your overall environmental health. Um, and that is very important to me that you guys all have safe, healthy, happy homes uh, as best we can do together. So let me uh, just continue on with the theme for today and I'll keep you guys posted. All right, hey guys. So I actually was able to find some yeast. So I'm gonna do the third description video. I have the supplies from when I bailed out on the first one after realizing I might not have everything that I needed or the space. So I'm just gonna reuse that plastic bottle. Uh, as I mentioned, they're in fairly short supply. So um, let's see here, okay. Just wanted to make sure I had my instructions pulled up. I will link the method that I used. I've got a quarter cup of sugar. Um, I also went ahead and measured out my yeast, or well, I have enough, um, and then I'll measure it out on video, and then my hot water. So we are doing equal parts of hot water, as you all already saw in the previous video, where I taped, uh, where I cut, started working on this one, and then realized I wasn't going to have enough space. I'm going to grab my sharps so that we can even this out a little bit. And I'm just going to pick up where I left off here, cutting the top, so we have this funnel action that we need, right? So bottom, top, and then superimposed in that way. So. I am going to go ahead and the trap is essentially ready to assemble because we're already in pieces. I'm going to go ahead and put my water in and pour slowly. It has pulled off a little bit. Um, I just want to make sure things stay that way. And then I'm going to add my equal parts sugar here. A little damp from my last round of water. There we go. All right, so we've got sugar and water mixing, and then I am going to snag a uh, 0.25 grams of yeast. So this one is one milliliter, so one milliliter is equal to one gram. So I'm just going to fill up about a quarter of that and get that going. Go ahead and drop that in. I can already see a little bit of a reaction there. Uh, the yeast is going to be what lets off CO2, um, and then the sugar serves the purpose of um, attracting, like feeding, uh, essentially. And then we are going to drop the top in here, and black apparently is quite attractive. So I went ahead and followed that part of the instruction from the original video. And I'm just going to take this all the way around here and fold it over, clip right here so that we can get this taped off and sealed. That way there's no point of exit for the bugs once they make their way into our handy dandy trap here. Um, so as you all can see, this took very little time. Uh, I made sure that the bottle opening is above the water line, and then this will, I'm sure, continue to react. So that is the last portion of that. Um, I hope you all found this useful to have all of those considerations included in one video, and I will link everything that I used.